Hey everybody, how you doing? Steve Camboris here, otherwise known as Cambo Trout. And this is gonna mark the first episode in my new science communication series. I did a previous one on Northern Snakehead. Well, this is gonna be a species deep dive into the topic of blue catfish, as well as flathead catfish, but the blue catfish is the main focus of this series. Now, the goal of this series is to share with you the latest science on these invasive catfish species that we have here in the Maryland, Virginia area. Now, today's episode, how we're going to start off this series, first of all, we're going to be talking to Mr. Aaron Bunch, and he's a fisheries biologist, fisheries manager, with the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. So he spent a lot of time with this species, and he is more than up to date on the science that's been out there. And Virginia in particular probably has as much, if not more, data on blue catfish and flathead catfish than anyone else out there. So in today's episode, we're going to cover who is Aaron Bunch, What's his experience been? Why is he a qualified voice to speak on this topic? As well as, again, defining the term invasive. What does that mean? Are blue catfish and flathead catfish invasive? And then we're gonna get into several other related topics. What is their impact? What species have we seen being impacted by these catfish? And we're actually gonna begin a conversation on what blue catfish especially, and flathead catfish, what they eat. So that's gonna be episode one. So I'll end right there so we can get to the actual interview. All right, let's get to it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Cambo Chop Fishing. And today we're going to be doing a species profile and deep dive into the topic of blue catfish in particular. Probably touch on flathead as well. But most of this will be dedicated to the blue catfish. So to get in all this information and answer these questions, we have Mr. Aaron Bunch from the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. But before we go any farther with the actual questions, I'm going to get, hand the floor, hand the mic over to Aaron so he can explain who he is, the work he does, and essentially why he's an authoritative voice on the topic of blue catfish. So Aaron, thanks so much for being with me here today. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here to answer our questions. Anything I can do to try to connect our fisheries biologists and the work they're doing to the fishermen out there, I'm all about it. So please take it away. Go ahead. Sure. So uh, as Steve said, Aaron Bunch, um, my official title is Tidal Rivers Project Leader. So in Virginia, on the Tidal Rivers of Virginia, I kind of consider myself the gray water biologist. And what I mean by that is we have two different agencies in the state. We have Virginia Marine Resources Commission and Virginia Department of Game and Island Fisheries. And a lot of the work that I do is kind of on the fringe between saltwater and freshwater. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so... Before I got here, I spent a lot of time in Arizona and the Grand Canyon working on a lot of different issues, including um, tailwater rainbow trout fisheries um, and endangered humpback chubs. So I'm really used to uh, understanding and, and studying the uh, conflicts between non-native and native species. North Carolina was some food web dynamics study and then the graduate work that I did down in South Florida. So that's kind of a little bit about myself. Um, currently, I'm right in the mix um, as far as blue catfish goes. Uh, uh, Game and Inland Fisheries, we have some of the strongest data out there to support and inform management decisions. And so that's a lot about what we'll be talking to today and what my job is currently with, uh, with Virginia. Fantastic. All right. so. To start this conversation on blue catfish, I thought we would start with where is the native range for blue catfish? Where did they originate and how did they come to be in Maryland, Virginia waters? Sure, so uh, blue catfish are native to North America. They're native to the Mississippi drainage, mm -hmm. Mississippi River, Missouri River. There's a subspecies that also goes down into Central America. Oh, wow. And so, um, you know, back in the 70s, we were, it was a different time period, right? Prior to that, paradigm was sport fish, sport fish, sport oh, yeah. fish, right? And so the, there was less emphasis on conservation, okay? And so now a lot of the management actions that we do uh, today are through the lens of the current paradigm, which is much more conservation oriented. And something that I want to touch base with you and, yeah. and your viewers here. Um, because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with management actions that happened back in the 70s. We're talking 50, 60 years ago, and we're trying to work through those issues now. That's tough. 
and it's that not is, a, it's not an rough. easy thing to do for sure. Virginia Game and Inland Fisheries, we stocked those fish back in the 70s. These rivers really didn't have a whole lot going on. They were very impacted by urbanization, agriculture. Mm. They weren't necessarily the cleanest of water bodies. Um, and so the blue catfish was stopped to kind of fill that void and try to create a really good sport fishery. And so that's, that's how, that's how the fish came to be. And we'll get into a lot more of that later in terms of what Aaron just touched on with how even today we're dealing with the ramifications of the past. And we're trying to find a balance today between sport fishing, conservation, and all the constituencies that are concerned with everyone who has a stake in this entire conversation. So we're going to get into all that as well. So here's probably what everyone's tuning in to hear about, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, here it comes. Actually, you know, before I ask the question, is there an invasive impact, let's again go through and define from a fisheries biologist perspective, from that discipline, how do you define the word invasive when you're talking about a species? Okay, so invasion dynamics or invasion ecology is fairly complex, and usually it has to do with a fish or another animal, plant, whatever, that comes into a new ecosystem. It was not original to that ecosystem. It's considered a non-native species. Um, and that fish or plant, animal, whatever, will reproduce, increase their population, and have kind of a boom bust cycle mm -hmm. um, in the early part of di invasion dynamics. But let's also define it as there can be native species that are invasive and non-native species that are invasive. So just because we're talking about invasive species doesn't necessarily differentiate the two. And a lot of times people get mixed up with the word non-native and invasive and, and they mean the same thing to a lot of people. Yes, they do, yep. In terms of my position, a fisheries biologist, blue catfish in Virginia and in the Chesapeake Bay are a non-native fish species that are invasive. All right. Under the ecological definition of invasion. They fit perfectly into that definition based on um, they're widely distributed. They move significant distances that I'll touch on later. Uh, and and you'll see from the videos uh, in this uh, Boy, yes you in, will. in this uh, documentary series how abundant, how overly abundant these fish are in these systems. And what we're going to touch on later is there is a compromise that can that can really be beneficial to all all stakeholders in this, and we'll touch on that later. Now you said you do classify them as invasive. Yes, um, I'm sure I'll ask some pointed questions about specific species later in this video. Sure. But since you did classify them as invasive, could you give us a few examples of species that they've displaced or species that they're known to cause harm to, things sure. like that? Sure. So um, the, the one that's the really the most dramatic uh, of species displacement that you're talking about is the native uh, bullhead species called the white catfish. So it was a widely distributed um, uh, you know, people like to catch them white catfish. Well, mm -hmm. now it, it's completely switched to virtually 99% blue catfish in these systems. And we saw that today as we were doing the actual surveys. We did. Yep. Um, there are native mussel beds up and down these tidal rivers, um, and, and that's a, a large food source for, for blue catfish. And so there could be impacts there with native mussels as well. Mm -hmm. It really varies by season, and it varies based on the salinity of the water as to other impacts. Okay, so in general, blue catfish are opportunistic omnivores. And let me spell that out for you. Mm. Yes, opportunistic, please. okay? It's whatever is abundant in the system at the time those fish can key in on as a prey item, right? What I mean by om omnivory is they can be vegetarians or they can be meatitarians. <laughs> it can vary by the size of the fish or what's available to the fish, right? Yep. So they're very, what you call plastic, as far as their ability to shift back and forth between different food items. Majority of the year, blue catfish feed on 
non-native corbicula, which is the Asiatic clam. They feed on vegetation. A large component of that vegetation is non-native hydrilla. They feed on white perch and gizzard shad. Gizzard shad is the primary food source for especially the larger blue catfish. So what happens with blue catfish is they do something called an ontogenetic diet shift. Yes, please break it down. Okay, yep. I'm gonna break this down. Ontogenetic diet shift is where a fish reaches a certain size mm -hmm. and the mouth, the gape width it's called, they're able to get their mouths and they make that shift. They, they're able to get their mouths around their prey, right? So it typically happens, I'd say around 20 to 30 inches where blue catfish can really start feeding on gizzard shad as a primary food item. The fish that get to that size at the greater rate, so they have the higher growth, reach that size where they can consume gizzard shad, those are the fish that have the energetic advantage and they're able to grow at a faster rate and become those big trophies. Mm. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Hey, are you good now? Yeah. We can begin? Yeah. Okay. I'm very sorry. Well, folks, that concludes part one of this series. We have a lot more ground to cover. The next episode is going to be on the 2017 Invasive Catfish Symposium. So we have a lot of data to get through, where to find them, how to catch them, you know, <laughs> pretty much everything. Uh, but I do want to make uh, one point here before we get out of here. You heard Aaron allude. Oh, a, a bald eagle flying by. It's a bald eagle! Oh my gosh! I thought it was a bald eagle because of my That's super cool. Yes, it is. Is that rare? What are we saying? Yeah, of course it's real. What do you think it is? A machine? Is it rare? Rare, yes. So, one point that Aaron touched on that I wanted to hit on as well is that. You know, in their native range, I don't really think they're a controversial species. Here in the Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania area, blue catfish are a controversial species. But, you know, in a lot of the series, we're going to focus on some of their impact, but we're also going to focus on the value of the species because they grow very large, they taste great, and they're a hell of a good time on rod and reel. Move ahead over, please. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Blair. As Aaron said, our goal for this series is to eventually arrive at a point where we're telling you a plan that we have going forward to accommodate all stakeholders. So the people who love sport fishing for catfish will get something of what they want. The people who want to see the catfish populations controlled to reduce invasive impact, they'll get some of what they want. And that's really what it's all about today, is connecting our fisheries managers with our fishermen and then getting to a point where we can find compromises for all of our stakeholders. So that's, aside from just informing you so you can make your own decisions, that's what this series is all about, is trying to find that common ground. So, you guys have anything to add? I love you, Oh, geez, Louise. Subscribe. <laughs> okay. All right, Runs. thank you. And we'll see y'all in episode three. And for right now, here's a little bit of catfishing action. Good deal. Hell yeah. Might be snagged on your back one. You got some dinner. You're right. Ooh. Is it a fish? Dude, I thought so. Or is it a snag? Nice. Well, let me turn around so you can get a view of this thing. Nice and, oh my Jesus, dude, that's a big one. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah look at that look at that yeah dude yeah